There are, of course, amazing accomplishments that are coming through the biomedical field. What else is going on in that story? Hi, Heather. We have our interlocutor here, ChatGPT, and looking forward to spending some more time talking with you about optimization culture. Looking forward to it. Heather, a decade ago, you were working on a project that used artificial technology to generate portraits of people based on random genetic materials you found on the streets of New York. Where are we today with the topic of genetic profiling? More and more of these technologies have been deployed without quite being ready for it, but it's also something that people are actively choosing through desire, we opt into the DNA database to be known because we want to pursue some kind of self-understanding, for example, am I a long distance runner or a sprinter? <laughs> we look to the, the DNA to tell us that, like a fortune teller or something like that. In the context of biology, optimizing can mean fine-tuning your body and mind to perform at their peak, such as tweaking your diet, exercise, and even mental habits to hack into the best version of yourself. I think another dynamic to this, which we've also talked about, is how there is a dynamic of power today harnessing people's desire to submit to systems of surveillance, security, and power. And I'm sure you have a lot to say about that. <laughs> In the default right now, we're heading towards a future where we are increasingly entering into these databases. We are kind of offering ourselves up as data and as sources of commodification through our cells, through our fluids, through our information. And so the question is really, how can we envision a different future from that, one where we maintain our humanity and our ethics and can infuse the technology with those values. It's true that people are more frequently offering up their biological data while using fitness tracking or wellness devices and apps. And there is a risk that genetic information could be misunderstood or misused, leading to further unintended consequences for people seeking jobs or even health insurance. Perhaps there are values that need to be set in order to design new technologies. Yeah, I love the idea that I get to be the architect of this new future. Number one would be equality, number two would be dignity, and three would be space for creative imagination. Beautiful. The way that I would kind of pull forth mine would be just to kind of listening to the needs of the world in a way. The first one I would say is disagreement or contestation. The respect of alterity, a kind of fundamental difference amongst people. And then the third, I would say, is non-teleology, which what that really means is that a refusal of thinking that the future is written in some kind of predetermined, you know, one directional path. To build an AI that embodies those six values, it would require a system that respects individual rights, encourages diverse perspectives, and fosters open-ended exploration. This AI would prioritize fairness, uphold human dignity, encourage creative thinking, and welcome different viewpoints without imposing a predetermined outcome. Sounds good. This would be like the public funded AI. <laughs> this has been really very rewarding conversation. Yeah, it's been great, Heather, as always. And I'm sure the next time will be very soon. The goal of you know social change is to make the impossible seem possible by reconfiguring what we even think the horizon of political change can be Hyundai Motor connecting art and technology